Well, g'day, curd nerds. Today, I wanted to try something a little bit different. Hence the coffee montage. What we're going to try and do today is make the largest cheese that I've ever made. Now it may not look very large, but let me tell you, this is uh, the biggest cheese that I've made so far. Didn't all go according to plan, of course, but I've got a gouda or gouda ready on the 14th of April of 2022. So let me show you some of the constraints and considerations that you may need to take into account when making a larger batch of cheese at home. One of the biggest ones is that when I normally make a chowder, that it late blows. And by late blowing, I mean it gets fissures and cracks in the center of the cheese and it's caused by a certain bacteria. So to prevent that bacteria from growing or being, it probably may be present in the milk, it may not, but it may be present in the milk if cows have been fed uh, silage, which is fermented grass. Uh, I don't know because uh, I would expect, hopefully, they've been fed on hay and uh, fresh pasture. I'm using a nice milk from Inglenook Dairy, which you'll see a little bit later in the clip. So to prevent the late blowing effect, I'm going to be using a protective culture by Sacco that I recently used in the Gaviera or Graviera uh, cheese making video and it's called LPRA. Now LP LPRA has uh, two uh, bacteria in them, two lactic bacteria that prevent the growth of unwanted bacteria besides the ones that you already introduce into the cheese. Uh, as in the form of starter cultures, and it also prevents yeasts and molds. So I'm hoping that this gouda or halda will uh, not late blow and we won't have any cracks or fissures and it'll be a nice, clean, elastic sort of paste that gouda is known for. So one of the challenges of making the biggest cheese of it I've ever made is to get a mold that's big enough to hold the curds that I wanna make and to be able to press it. Now, luckily I was given the uh, big three kilo mold from Lauda in, in the Netherlands. And I was also gifted a wonderful cheese press by David. This is a compound uh, lever cheese press for want of a better word. You don't need much weight on the end. I haven't got any weight on it at the moment, but we will soon. Uh, and it will work as far as I can tell anyway. Uh, so that, that's going to be good fun. The other challenge is the ingredients. Probably not so much. You can always pick up more milk. It's no big deal. So today I'm using milk from Inglenook Dairy. Uh, it's uh, unhomogenized but pasteurized milk. Uh, so that should be uh, very good in this cheese. So uh, I've got the ingredients there. They're very basic. It's just going to be a simple mesophilic, some rennet, calcium chloride, uh, and some non-chlorinated water to, um, to help that. And the final challenge that I see is the size of your pot. So this pot is, I'm hoping about 15 to 16 litres. It doesn't have anything written on it. Um, but I know that uh, eight litres comes to halfway or two gallons comes to halfway up. So I'm hoping I can get all 16 litres or what's that, four gallons of milk into the pot. So that's the other challenge to get a pot big enough. 
Obviously you have to have a way to heat it, so I'm gonna be using the sous vide. I know that this pot fits into my sink, so I can use a water bath with the precision cooker. So that should be no issues. They're the only challenges I can see. There will be a, later, a challenge later on, which will be uh, a container to brine it in, but we'll get to that as we progress through the video. So to make this large chowder, you'll need the following ingredients. 14 litres or 3.7 gallons of whole cow's milk, one quarter of a teaspoon of MA11 or two sachets of Mad Millie Mesophilic Culture, one sixty-fourth of a teaspoon of Sacco LPRA Protective Culture, five eighths of a teaspoon or three millilitres of calcium chloride diluted in quarter of a cup of non-chlorinated water, five eighths of a teaspoon or three millilitres of single strength rennet, I'm using IMCU 200, diluted in quarter of a cup of non-chlorinated water. You'll need a saturated 18% brine solution, and you'll need some cheese wax or liquid PVA coating. So set up your water bath, and I had to make sure that the pot was in the water bath to start with. Normally I preheat the milk on the stove top, but I couldn't do that this time. So heat your milk up to 29 degrees Celsius or 85 degrees Fahrenheit. Now I'm just whisking in some cream that was a little bit solid in the milk there. And you can see the starting temperature is about 19. Now I did leave the milk cartons out on the side for about two hours before I started this process. So once the milk is at temperature just giving it a quick stir to stir any cream back in. And it is, it's at 29 degrees, a little bit higher, but that's okay. Now we're gonna add the mesophilic starter culture. Now the two sachets of the Mad Millie, it's called cheese mesophilic culture. It added up to about quarter of a teaspoon of culture. There we go. Just sprinkle that over the top. Now don't forget to add the protective culture to prevent late blowing or mold growth on your cheese. And I'm gonna cover that up and allow it to rehydrate for five minutes. So five minutes later, take off the lid and we're going to stir in the two cultures. There was a lot of milk. I had to make sure that when I was stirring, I didn't spill it into the water bath. I may have done that once or twice. Anyway, it's time to add the calcium chloride solution. So while stirring the milk, just pour that in and then give that a stir for about 30 seconds. Then we're going to add the rennet solution that's been diluted in the water while stirring the milk. And then make sure you don't stir for any longer than one minute. So cover that and allow the curds to set for 40 minutes. Now I found that was spot on. I did test a little bit earlier, but just check for a clean break and that looks nice and firm and not sloppy. So cut the curds into 1.25 centimeter or half inch cubes. I did the horizontals with the curd harp and I'm using the curd knife to do the vertical cuts. Try and get as close to the right size as possible. So cover that up and allow the curds to heal for five minutes. This ensures they don't fracture when you first stir them. That's a good sign that that weighs there. Just give that a stir. Now we're going to stir for five minutes. Now, if there are any large pieces, just break them up with the edge of the spoon. So 
So after the five minutes of stirring, you can see that a little bit more whey has been expelled. And now we're going to allow the curds to settle for five minutes. This is so we can drain off some of that whey and replace it with water to do a water bath. So I'm using a sanitized sieve and a big ladle and we're going to dip off 1.5 litres or six cups of whey. So I'm measuring that on the side of the jug. And we're at about 1.5 litres there, that's good. And replace it with an equal amount of water that has been heated to 60 degrees Celsius or 140 degrees Fahrenheit. And that is replacing the whey. Now what that does is it washes the curd and removes some of the lactose. So it's a less sharper cheese. So the new temperature should be at 33 Celsius or 92 Fahrenheit. Now we're going to stir that for 10 minutes and this process is known as washing the curd. So meanwhile heat about 6 litres or 6.3 quarts of non-chlorinated water to 45 degrees Celsius or 112 Fahrenheit. Now we're going to let that settle for 5 minutes and hopefully our water on the stove is staying warm. Now to do a second washing, we're going to dip off the whey to the level of the curds. Now this whey is not good for much because it has been diluted with that initial batch of water. So you can't really make ricotta or anything like that out of it. So just dip down until you can see the, the, the level of the curds. There we are. So it's about a third of the pot. So we're going to add water at 45 degrees Celsius, 112 Fahrenheit to replace the whey. And the new temperature should be about 37 Celsius or 98 Fahrenheit. Just make sure you adjust your precision cooker to uh, compensate for that. We're going to wash the curds for 20 minutes now. And this really does, uh, has removed lots of lactose. So it's going to be a much milder cheese. Uh, so there's not enough food for the uh, the cultures to eat the lactose and turn it into lactic acid. So after all that stirring you can see the temperature is indeed at 37 degrees Celsius and the curds have shrunk quite a bit. So about the size of a baked bean or navy bean. So I'm just getting rid of the heating equipment there, the precision cooker. I've taken the water out. I will remove the precision cooker in a second. But we're going to allow the curds to settle for five minutes. You can see I've remo removed the precision cooker. Now, make sure you line a colander with a loose weave cheesecloth. And we're going to transfer the curds into the cheesecloth lined colander just to let them drain. So we're not draining for very long, it's about two or three minutes tops. And we're going to transfer the curds into the basket or mould, the biggest one you've got. Now the beauty with this basket or mould I've got here is that you don't need a cheesecloth and you don't need to flip the cheese during the cheese making process. So we're going to top with the big follower and press that down until you meet the curds and there it is you can see some of the whey flowing out there don't press too heavily that's the presser's job now this is the first time i've ever used this press and it was quite an experience as you can see as we progress but yeah, first of all, we put the basket in there. Now I needed a little uh, extra follower. So I used a wooden trivet, bamboo trivet that I had there. And that was perfect to apply the pressure onto the top of the follower. Now we're going to apply 10 kilograms or 22 pounds of pressure for 30 minutes. Now I had to calculate the weight given to me by 
uh, Gary, who there's a little scale you can see in the background there. So I had to apply the appropriate amount of weight to get 10 kilograms of pressure. And as you can see, the whey is starting to drip out now when I let go of the milk jug with the water in it. Now the whey, as you can see, should only be dripping out. It shouldn't be flowing out. And you can see that the press is working because the lever's going down. So after that 30 minutes, we're just going to remove that weight and we're going to increase the weight. I just had to weigh a little bit more water. And I'm just following the guidance on the chart that was given to me. So you can see that the arm is all the way down. So what I'm going to have to do first is adjust the center pressing arm. Just take out the wing nut there and slip it up a notch. So pop out that screw. Or oh, it's a bolt. It's not a screw, it's a bolt. Take it up one notch and pop it back through again. You can see the lever is higher now, which is good, and that's what I needed. So now I can apply the weight to the lever again. Now I'm just gonna check, I don't didn't have to do this step, but I wanted to pull it out and have a look at how far down it was, and it was a lot lower than I expected. This is also one of the issues you'll find that you need a lot of milk to fill a mould this big, which I'll talk about a little bit later on. So popping that back into the press. Just making sure that's centred, I don't want a wonky cheese. And I'm going to apply 15 kilograms or 33 pounds of pressure for 12 hours or overnight. So it was the next day for me. So I'll just remove the weight from the arm and pull it out of the press. And just get that out the way, it's a little bit cumbersome. So we're going to remove the cheese from the basket now. Now this took a little bit of finessing to get it out. I had to bang it on the side before the cheese came out. Eh, it was a little bit smaller than I expected. Very dense though. And it had some, um, some tailings on the edges, which I cleaned that up later on. So one of the problems I found was that my brining bucket was way too small. So I just put it in a large plastic container poured the brine onto it, it floated to the top. And we're gonna brine it for 12 hours and turn it at the six hour mark. Notice I put a bit of salt on the top there because that surface was exposed. So 12 hours, flip it at six and then salt the other side. So after the 12 hours of brining, we're going to remove it from the brine, place it on a mat. Now I'm using a little bit of paper towel just to dry that off. I didn't want it too moist and I used the paper towel to get rid of those burrs on the edge and that worked fine. So the after brine weight is 1.738 kilograms or 3.8 pounds. Now we're going to air dry that until it's touch dry. Mine took three days. I turned it twice daily and it was ready for waxing. Now one of the issues I had was my wax bowl was way too small, couldn't fit this cheese in it. Normally I just dip it in, but we're gonna have to uh, apply two to three layers. So I had to use a spoon and a little brush to kind of coat it with the wax. This took quite a while. Now it would have been better if I had a sourced some liquid PVA coat. Uh, it would have been much easier to paint on 
than the hot wax, but needs must, you do what you can with what you've got. Uh, that's the beauty of home cheese making, I reckon. Anyway, so I've got about two or three coats on there, as you can see, without any holes after a good inspection there. So we're going to ripen the cheese at 13 degrees Celsius or 55 Fahrenheit for six weeks and turn that every a week or every couple of times a week. Anyway, back to Gav. So there you have it. That's how we make a larger batch of cheese. And in this case, as I mentioned at the start of the video, it's a chowder. Uh, so some of the other things that I should have taken into consideration was probably a bigger pot size. You saw in the video that I could only fit in 14 litres of milk. Ideally, a cheese using the basket that I used, uh, the big three kilo basket from Lauda, it really did need about 20 litres of milk. Now, I have been since researching uh, buying a stainless steel pot that's about 20 litres. And the problem is the diameter of the pots are way too large for either my stovetop or for my sink that I currently use as a water bath. So that's another consideration you may need to take into account is heating your milk, finding some way to heat a large batch of milk. And finally, the last consideration I would have you uh, think about is uh, waxing or vacuum packing the cheese after it's finished. Now, chowder is uh, traditionally waxed, as you can see here, and it's a bit of a dog's breakfast, as you saw in the video. I had to paint all of the wax on. I couldn't dip it. The little uh, waxing bowl that I normally just dip the one kilo cheeses into was way too small. Couldn't do anything about that. So I basically had to paint all the wax on. I did a check out of shot uh, whether it would fit into a vacuum pack bag and the bags that I've got are not wide enough. So didn't fit in. So normally the cheese is given a coat of uh, what's called paracoat or liquid coat or something like that. Uh, it's very popular in the Netherlands and it's basically a uh, food safe PVA uh, a liquid and it has a mold inhibitor in it and they just dip it in that, pull it out and it gets discarded before you eat the cheese. You may find uh, when you've bought store-bought gouda that you get this little thin yellow coat uh, and underneath that it has a little layer of white and that little layer of white is the the paracoat or the or the cheese coating anyway i didn't have any of that couldn't find any so i had to opt for the wax and it seems to be doing okay i've got it resting on a uh, a pine board with a little bit of baking paper underneath so it doesn't leak um, it's not leaking per se this is just moisture off of the fridge uh, the cheese fridge that i've got it sitting in so it's doing all right it's not swelling up or anything which is good because as we saw we did add the mold and yeast inhibitor uh, LPRA. So, so far so good. Uh, it hasn't swollen or doesn't look like it's going through uh, any late blowing process. So I'm very pleased with that. Anyway, if you like the video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. If you like this style of video, where I'm not actually making a cheese, but I'm talking about the techniques of cheese, leave a comment below, let me know what you think and I would love to make some more of these uh, in a later date. Anyway, it's been a pleasure presenting how to make a larger cheese. I'm Gavin Weber, and thanks for watching Curd Nerds, and we will see you next time.